Welcome to church. I'm glad you're joining me. Even though this room is empty, I know that we're all together in spirit. I know that God is with us. He told us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we're, in, um, we're honoring him by honoring our government. And I know that we're not coming together in, in groups like they've asked us not to, but thank God for the internet. Thank God for us being able to have these electronic devices so that we can still get together. And I'm glad that you've joined me. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity that we have to come and feast together at your table on the word of God and reach over and get some of this peace and reach over there and get some of that faith and some of that love over there and some of that comfort and some of that strength and all these good things that you prepared for us. Lord, we purpose in our hearts that we're going to look into the perfect law of liberty and Lord, we're going to experience a great move of your spirit in our lives. Speak to our hearts and change our lives with your word. We love you and honor you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I have on my heart to talk to you on the subject, staying strong in the Lord, in a weak, vulnerable world. Staying strong in the Lord, in a weak, vulnerable world. When the nation seems to be the most vulnerable and it's at its weakest point, it is very important that the people of God be their strongest. We've got to be the answer to, uh, that the world's looking for. God in us is their answer. We are the body of Christ. We're walking around on this earth as the body of Christ. And whether we realize it or not, and whether they realize it or not, if the truth be known, they're looking at us, the body of Christ, the church, for the real true answers. A weak, vulnerable society needs so badly to see a strong church. We've got to not only appear strong, but we've got to possess the very strength of God, and we can. We've got to live in the reality of the strength of God, and it is ours to live in. We can't afford to be weak because if we're weak, what will happen? We will faint, and we can't faint. The world is fainting, but we can't faint. We're the people of God, and we're not supposed to faint because we have the strength of God living in us. We can't afford to faint when it's the most important that we remain strong so that we can be victorious. It's more important now than ever that we be strong. We can't afford for our strength to be small. The scripture tells us in Proverbs 24, 10, it says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. We don't need small strength. We got to have big strength right now. It says in the New Living, it says, if you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. We need to remember that now. If we feel like we're fainting, we need to do whatever we've got to do to get our strength built back up. The uh, Passion Translation says, if you faint when under pressure, you have need of courage. Courage is our strength. We're only as strong as we are courageous. Glory to God. I'm just going to take some scriptures and just prove a few points about the strength of God in us and how important it is to stay strong in a weak, vulnerable world around us. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse one in the Amplified Version, it says, therefore, then, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony of the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patience, endurance, and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that's set before us. You know, the ones that have already gone on before us, I believe today they're looking on from the grandstands of heaven. I believe they're looking down here, and if we could just hear their voices, they could say to us, Yes, heaven is so much more than you ever thought it could be. And what you're going through with is nothing to be compared with what you're going to get on the good side. You know, it would be so easy to faint in our minds. But let's listen. Let's just believe right now that we're hearing the voices of them saying, cheering us on, run on, run on, run on. Don't be weak, be strong. You've got the strength of God, you can make it. You stand in there, you don't give up, you don't give in, and you don't give out. You keep going 
to the finish line. That's what Jesus did. This is talking about him. It says, looking away from all that will distract us to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief. And it and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, listen now, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame. You know, the things that, that people in this world have been going through with lately, it's nothing to compare what Jesus went through with. But it says, what did it say here? It says, he endured the cross and he despised and he ignored the shame, knowing where he was headed. And it said, he is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. It said, just think about him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. We're not, we can't do that. We got to keep thinking victory. We got to kind of keep, we've got to keep thinking overcoming. We got to keep thinking we're winners. We're not losers. We're overcomers. We're not over go, uh, undergoers. We're victors. We're not victims. Mm. Glory to God. We always, and that includes now, we always triumph in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Galatians 6 and 9, it says, and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we will reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Listen, all we've got to do is hold on to God a little bit longer. All we've got to do is be strong in the Lord a little bit longer. And all this is going to be over with. And it's going to be glory and joy unspeakable forever. And you know what? We can have a lot of that right now with days of heaven on earth in the middle of a world full of literal hell. Glory to God. Thank God. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm talking about staying strong in the Lord in a weak, vulnerable world. Stay strong. In Ephesians chapter six, and I'm reading from the King James here, verses 10 through 12, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We don't have to be strong in ourselves. He said, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places, demonic forces. But you know what? The Bible has told us God has given us power and authority over all the power of the enemy. And if we'll just believe that, he said, nothing shall by any means harm us as we walk in that authority. In Ephesians 6 and 10, in the Passion, it says, Now, my beloved ones, I've saved these most important truths for last. He said, be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for, provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. But you know what? We're not in that bondage. We're not under their dominion. They're not the king of our hearts. Jesus is. We live in his kingdom. We've been delivered from their power. We've been rescued. We've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Glory to God. If you look with me in Joshua chapter one and verse one in the Amplified, 
It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant is dead. And you know, I want you to think about this. I remember back 9-11, that day life changed in America. Uh, life as we knew it in the natural realm, in this nation, has not been the same. A lot of things had to change uh, to make life in the natural realm safe and livable in this nation. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of things had to change. Uh, there's been so much that's changed. Well, this uh, coronavirus pandemic, it's another thing that's changed so much. And I'm believing that this world, this nation, the whole world is not going to be the same after this. And I'm going to be honest with you. I believe it's not going to be the same in a good way because I believe revival is coming. So as it's saying right here, Moses, thy servant is dead. I believe that life as we knew it in the past, even though there were some good things happened, that's gone. That's over with. That won't be lived again. But we've got the life of Joshua now. We're not living the life of Moses anymore. We're about to live the life of Joshua. It says, so now arise, take your place. It said, go over this Jordan, you and all this people. And he said for them to do it, they had to make some effort. And we've got to make some effort. We've got to make some faith and love effort. We've got to be strong and we've got to be courageous if we're going to get to this place and do all of this that God's got us here to get accomplished. He said, go, arise, take your place, go over this Jordan, you and all the people into the land which I'm giving to them, to you, the Israelites. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given you as I promised Moses. God has been giving us promises for decades. I mean, even, even for centuries. Um, he's been given promises for what he was going to do here in these last days. And it's time for us to rise up in strength and get ready to do it. Because God is about to show up and show out and ways that we have never even dreamed. And it's going to be so wonderful. These are what, these are the things that God's promised us from the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan to the great Mediterranean sea on the West. It said that shall be your territory. It said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. No matter what kind of plans the enemy has cropped up, no weapon that he ever tries to form against us, I declare in the name of Jesus, as God has already declared, he will not be able to stand up against us because God is on our side and he is the victorious one. Glory to God. Now look at verse six. It says, be strong, be confident. Don't be weak. And don't lose your confidence. He said, be strong and be confident and of a good courage for you shall cause this people to inherit the land, which I swear to their fathers to give them. He said, only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant commanded you turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. It's about to get better here now. It said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Glory to God. We're to meditate on the word of God day and night and get it in our heart, get our faith built up, get our expectancy built up so we can go in and possess this land that God has promised us. It says, for then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll deal wisely and have good success. He said, have not, I commanded you, be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever we go in fulfilling this plan, that God has for us, he's going to be right there with us. Glory to God. Psalm 46, verse one, we're talking about staying strong in the Lord in a weak, vulnerable world. It says, God is our refuge and strength, mighty and impenetrable to temptation, 
a very present and well proved help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains be shaken into the midst of the sea. And you know, there's so much about the world that has changed. And I know that we feel like that our support system has been jerked out from under us in a sense in the natural realm. But I'm telling you, he said, though all of these things happen, and though, the, and, the, and though the mountains move and they're cast into the sea, he said, for the raging roar of stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in him. Glory to God. We're to keep the faith. God has promised and his part is to perform it as you and I believe it and walk in this divine strength of his. Now, how, if we're to be strong in a uh, weak, vulnerable world, how do we become strong and stay strong? I want to talk about that. Number one, rejoice in the good things the Lord has done. And rejoice just simply means rejoy yourself. In Nehemiah 8 and 10, it said, Then, said, then he said unto me, unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, in other words, don't be sitting around worrying, defeated, depressed, in doubt and fear, and unbelief, all these kind of things. He said, go and eat the fat, drink the sweet. Go on out there and do what you're called to do. Go on out there and love people. He said, for this day is holy unto the Lord. And he said, neither be you sorry. Don't be sit or, sitting around sorrowful. It said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, how do we get this joy? We have to go, first of all, it is a fruit of the spirit. It was deposited in our spirits when we were born again. But you know, joy has a way of trying to get away from us. So we have to, just like we do with our vehicles, when our tanks begin to get toward empty, we have to go and refuel. When our spiritual tanks begin to get empty or low on joy, we have to go and rejoy. And that's why he said in Philippians chapter four and verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, gladden yourselves in him. And again, I say, rejoice, rejoice. How do you do that? You sell as the message says, you celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. You celebrate the things that God has done for you. Talk about them, um, worship in them, praise him for them. Go back and, and, and read it again. Go back and, and celebrate again over and over and over everything that God has done for you. That's how you rejoice. Get that joy built up. Keep your joy tank full if you want to be strong because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Number two, say you're strong. We cannot afford to go around speaking death over our strength. What does it say? In uh, Joel chapter three and verse 10, let the weak say I am strong. There is so much strength and power in what we say in faith. And if we go around talking about how defeated or how weak we are, that's exactly what we're going to have. But if we'll go around talking about, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, it's just something that happens supernaturally. That strength becomes a reality. I want to encourage you, be strong. It says here in, in the, uh, the message, it says, turn your shovels into swords, turn your hoes into spears. That, that, that's turning natural things into warfaring things against the evil. It says, let the weak one throw out his chest and say, I'm tough. I'm a fighter. Glory to God. Another one is, to be strong, we've got to renew our minds to the word of God. Hearing the word of God with our hearts builds our faith and our faith is the strength that gives us the victory to overcome this world and everything that ever comes against us as long as we're in this world. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith, we have to go back and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. We can't just live on yesterday or a week ago or a year ago's faith and what we heard in the word. No, we've got to go back and hear it. Every opportunity we get, 
Go back and hear the word. Go back and renew our minds to the word. And according to 1 John 5 and 4, as our faith is built, we're, we're believers. And, and as believers, we overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So it's so important to keep our minds renewed to the word of God. And that'll build our strength. Number three is, or number four, I'm sorry, I've already uh, done number three. Number four is pray in the spirit a lot. Pray in the spirit a lot. I was uh, in a position, as I, I think I mentioned this on Sunday's sermon a few days ago, that it seemed like everything was going chaotic. I, I was seeing uh, demonic attacks in people's lives that were unreal. I'm talking about things that you never dream of. These things were going on in people's lives. And um, all of a sudden, I felt the Spirit of God rise up in me. And I went out on my front porch and I began to worship God. And I began to pray in the Spirit. And um, you can say what you want to about it, but I know what it does for me. I began to pray in the Spirit hard and fast. And I walked back and forth up and down the porch there on our house, the front porch, uh, probably close to an hour. And, and I continued to pray in the spirit probably for about three hours. But what happened, what was going on inside of me was I was praying things through that I didn't know how to pray through in the spirit. Uh, the Bible talks about that. The spirit helps our infirmities, or our weaknesses, for we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself the one on the inside of us makes uh, intercession for us with groanings, words that we do not know how to utter. It's God's language praying through us back to himself, praying in the spirit. Anyway, I prayed in the spirit and prayed in the spirit. And I'm going to tell you, it was tough warfare for a little while. But after a little while, I began to feel victory coming. I began to feel the heaviness and I be, uh, 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 lighten up and I began to feel the war warfare as it was weakening that was coming against us. And I began to feel things falling into place. And one of the things that was so chaotic at that moment was somebody was in a, in a life-threatening position. They had called me about it. And it was very serious. And some other things had already been going on that was just unreal. Things unheard of, attacks that were unheard of. And, but I knew this person could possibly die in the condition they were in. So I knew there was one thing to do. I didn't know what to pray for as I ought. So I began to pray in the spirit. The spirit of God began to rise up in me. And I'm telling you, there was some warfare going on. The, and, and I could just feel the strength of God working through me. And I prayed and I prayed and I knew I was warring for somebody's life. And I did. I prayed in the spirit. And I prayed in the spirit. And I prayed in the spirit. And I began to feel things get better. And um, I, like I said, I prayed in the spirit probably for about three hours. And uh, finally, I, I, I got a release from it. I went to bed. And sometime after that, I got a text from that person. And they were letting me know that everything was okay. And they were thanking me for doing warfare on their behalf. But it really wasn't me. It was the Spirit of God raising, rising up in me and it was building up my faith to overcome what was coming against us and all that chaos and disorder in this world. The scripture says here in uh, Jude verse 20, it says, but you beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. You may feel like your faith is on the bottom. And that's about where I felt before I started praying in the Spirit that night. Um, I'm telling you, the enemy had been speaking lies to me. I had heard a bunch of the stuff on television. I had read some stuff on Facebook about all this crisis and the coronavirus and all this death stuff. And then I, see, I saw all of these unreal attacks that were coming against people. And I needed something to happen. I needed to be built up. I felt like my spiritual battery was almost dead. Well, that's what this means when he said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. That means he builds himself up 
Just like you've hooked up a battery charger to a battery and you leave it there for a, a season of time and it gets built up. I prayed in the spirit. My faith got built up and it overcame those things that were coming against us. And glory to God, it was amazing. It was amazing. There was a miracle that took place during that time that actually saved somebody's life. Glory to God. And number five is spend time waiting on the Lord, worshiping him in his presence. Isaiah 40 and verse 28, it says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? It says he does not faint and grow weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary and to him who has no might, he increases strength causing it to multiply and making it to abound, super abound in him. It says, even youths shall faint and be weary and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. It said, but those who wait on the Lord, when you wait on the Lord, you're spending time in his presence, worshiping him. Those that wait for the Lord, who wait on him to show up as you worship, as you wait on him to really come into the scene with all his glory and all his power and his hosts of angels to perform and get done whatever we need done, who expect, look for, and hope in him. It says they'll change and renew their strength. It's not that we're renewing human strength and making it larger. It's that we're actually changing from human strength to God's strength. It says, They'll lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. They'll mount up to the sun. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint and become tired. Glory to God. Five things. How do you become strong? Rejoice in the good things the Lord has done. In other words, rejoice. Number two, say you're strong because there's so much power in what you say in faith. And number three, renew your mind to the word of God. Number four, pray in the spirit a lot. And number five, spend time waiting on the Lord, worshiping in his presence. Now, before I close this tonight, I want to pray a prayer of strength. And it's actually a prayer that Paul prayed in uh, the book of Ephesians chapter three and verse 14. Ephesians 3, verse 14. And I want to pray it out of the Amplified Version. It says, For this reason, seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that the Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. Now get this right here in verse 16. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory, his presence in your life to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. The strength we need does not come from out here. It comes from in here, through the Spirit, by the Spirit of God in the inner man. That's where our strength comes from. And here's what happens. It says, may Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, hide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it. And that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God. May you have the richest measure of his divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Now here's where it's at. Now to him, now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power or his strength that's at work within us, he is able to carry out his purpose 
and do super abundantly far above, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all nations forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Strengthened by his spirit in the inner man so that he can do exceeding abundantly above all we ever dare ask or think or pray or dream. Glory to God. This world needs a strong church. We're the ones that have the strength to overcome this world. Staying strong in a weak, vulnerable world. I want to encourage you, do whatever you've got to do. Take these five things that I mentioned and do them. We've got to stay strong. I mean, really, it is so important. We cannot be weak or we'll, be, or we'll faint. And if we faint, we'll be defeated. But we're not to be defeated. We're to be victors and not victims. We're to be overcomers, not undergoers. We're to be winners and not losers. We're to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. In all these things, we're more than conquerors. We know who God is. We know who we are. We know who he is in us. We know his strength in us. And therefore, none of these things move us. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, that we have your strength. We're not without it. We don't have to be out here um, in a world, Lord, relying on human strength. Lord, it's because of your strength in us that when we're the weakest in the natural, that's when we're the strongest. And the weaker we are in human strength, the stronger we are in you. The less we rely on human strength, the more we rely on your strength. And Lord, we're able to show that strength to a weak, vulnerable world. I thank you so much for it. And I give you the glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Before we leave, I want to give you an opportunity if you've not accepted Jesus Christ to do so before we um, dismiss this service. I, uh, I want you to know the scripture says that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from your sin and from all unrighteousness. He'll, he'll become, he has become your sin so you could become his righteousness. It's not something we've got to do. It's something he's already done. All we have to do, the hard part being done, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we'd be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's you. And that's me. And if you'll pray this prayer with me and listen, you can't depend on my praying it. You've got to pray it and you've got to believe it. If you'll do that, you can be just as saved as me or anybody else. Pray this prayer with me and mean it. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins and to come into my heart and my life and be my savior and my Lord. I believe that you died for me and rose again to give me eternal life. So at this moment, by faith, I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. And I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and making me free and giving me the grace to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you're just as saved as anybody else. You're just as righteous as anybody else. I love you and I thank God for you. And I say to all of us today, every one of us, the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift his countenance upon us and give us peace. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I bless us and apply the blood of Jesus over us and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen and amen. Stay strong. Stay in faith. Stay in love. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look to the left or the right. 
pay attention to God's words and his words only. They, those are the words that have saving power to deliver us and set us free. We are redeemed and we have the, everything it takes to live in the redemption and all these wonderful things Jesus has paid for us to have to live in victory. God bless you. We love you and we'll see you soon. God bless.